Over the past year, Banger TV reviewed more than 50 new metal records. And here in Lock Horns, we've had 20 live stream debates. We've dissected metal subgenres, albums, record labels, and more. That's a lot of music. But it would be impossible for us to cover everything. So today, we're throwing it over to you. What are your favorite metal albums of the year? What disappointed you? Which bands made the biggest impact? And who are the ones to watch for next year? This week on Lock Horns, it's the viewer's choice for best metal albums of 27. Welcome back to Lock Horns, Banger TV's metal debate show coming to you from the Banger Hangar. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And also, if you are watching this live, we are also archived and vice versa. Anyway, here we are. We made it to the end of 2017 and it's the last show of the year, which makes it a big one. And there's no better man to help me with this lofty task than the man with the most metal name on the planet, Bradley Zorg Drager. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. It's been a while since we've done the lock horns it together. Has. It has. How have you been? What have you been up to? Good. Closing off the year, you know, at Exclaim. Uh, my last Overkill review comes out tomorrow, Asking Alexandria. Uh, this weekend I'm going down to Buffalo. I'm going to see Vane in somebody's basement, so I might not survive that. And then the Every Time I Die Christmas show with 18 Visions, Vane, Knocked Loose, etc. So You may not be able to survive the trip to Buffalo primarily because of the weather we're having, but that's a whole other story. It's cold out in Toronto. Anyway... I couldn't do this, of course, without Lisa Latasur. Hi. Oh, that's so nice. We're well, nice here for I, a moment only. For a moment. I'm in the spirit. We got a Santa hat on the horn, so you know, channeling that. It's okay. I'm also in the Christmas spirit. I brought my hell bells. Ah, to go with your cow bell from hell. Yeah. So uh, we're doing something a little different with the fans this week? We are. Week? Uh, right off the top, uh, this is the part of the show where we like to uh, shout out to the people who are watching us live and in the chat from around the world and tell people where they're from. Uh, but this week, because it's a very special Lockhorns Christmas show, we had people send photos in, Sam, so that you could actually see what they look like. These people exist? So they they actually do. Have faces? So we're going to run a short little slideshow of uh, pictures of some of the Lockhorns viewers. I'm looking forward to this. I've never seen these people. Let's see what it looks like. Let's run it. Here we've got, we've got Arthe Felipe Casanha from Portugal, Jamie Laszlo from uh, Ohio, Nick Ottoviano in Philly. There you are, Hannah Kay and her sister at Vakken. Uh, we've got Paul from England and his daughter. Isn't that nice? Jordan from Barrie, also raising a metal head. Nice to see Alex from Philly. We've got uh, Dalen from uh, Portland. Maiden fan. Liam from Yorkshire with our man from Solstafir. Nice to see. We've got Reinhardt from Austria with Max and Gloria. Shout out to them. Barak from Zirok Radio in Israel. Carlos from the Philippines. Uh, Leek, eh? Leek from Santiago, Chile. And Sam. Love the name. Love the shirt. From NYC. Nice to see all those faces. Uh, and thanks again for uh, joining us uh, again on Lock Horns. Okay, uh, this week uh, we're going to do something a little bit uh, different than what we typically do at the end of the year. This is all about you, the viewers, telling us what your favorite metal albums of 2017 are. So by the end of this show, we want to get 10 onto the board that all of you out there can at least agree on to a certain extent that you think were the best metal albums of the year. And because Brad and I and the entire Banger team, that we've already done this, we've already picked our favorite uh, albums of the year. We don't, uh, we don't need to bore people with our faves uh, again. But uh, do we have an image there of our picks? There we go. I went a complete reversal and chose Mastodon after giving it a stinker of a review. And Brad, you like that Russian band whose name I just cannot uh, pronounce. But they told me how to pronounce it. It's Bufahamat, not uh -huh. Bufahamat. Okay. So I was wrong. And, and you guys are buddies now. Yeah, we, we chat. They're putting their stuff up on Spotify. That's awesome. So if you use Spotify, you can listen to it, and you should. That's awesome. And yeah, there are a lot of other good records there, and, and the whole team there at uh, Banger TV chimed 
in. Uh, there's also best of lists, uh, Brad, I guess exclaim in your, your day job. You guys, you guys did your picks. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, as always, we do it. We do a list. It's a it's a vote based system. All, anybody can submit a list for any subgenre, and then mm. we tally it up based on. That. And some crossover with uh, Banger TV because I know Blaine's album of the year was uh, Power Trip, and a lot of uh, Banger TV viewers loved that uh, that thrash offering. Okay, Lisa, how are we going to do this? What's the plan? So many records, and uh, in the past we've had uh, video submissions and guest choice and legend and all those things, and this week it's purely about the viewers, and you have lots of different tastes and lots of different picks. So we've organized these as much as we can by genre. We're going to tackle this uh, genre by genre. And we started with death metal because uh, we get a lot of comments about death metal uh, on our show. And also Decibel magazine said it was the year of death metal. So I, I took my cue from that. Uh, so I thought we would start with that. And uh, just to uh, give you guys some inspiration for your comments, we have some uh, music videos to show you to get started. Okay, so we're gonna run some tape before we get into our debate of what are the best death metal releases of 2017. Uh, let's take a look at that tape. We got a montage, <laughs> love a montage. Even One of the heaviest montages ever put together. Uh, some nice stuff there, some Dying Fetus. I know you're a fan and a lot of people like that record. Uh, this year, Brad Decibel called it the year of death metal. Give me your thoughts on that. It's funny because actually planning way in advance, I was speaking with one of my writers from Exclaim. We were talking about how it seemed like it was shaping up to be the year of death metal back in like February. Then Decibel put that out and we we're like, dang, they stole our thunder. But yeah, I mean, I think it totally is. And I think that the reason it is, is because there's so many like older legendary bands coming out and, mm -hmm. you know, putting out albums. Um, you know, I, Lisa informed me that there was some people who complained about Decibel only covering the, the, bigger, the bigger bands. And right. there was plenty of awesome, like, more underground bands that did put out awesome records. But you don't put those on the cover of a magazine because they're not going to move units. Right. I don't think they're saying that those uh, those aren't great. There's yep. reviews for them. They're smaller features. Yep. It was a great year for death metal. It's always a tough balance, right? Because we've always got a lot of new good stuff coming out. But at the same time, you do want to honor the greats. And we were talking before we went to camera. Like sometimes, you know, when you're five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten records in, it's hard to find that juice. And so when a legendary band kind of comes out with a great record and maybe a better record in the last few years of their career, it's sort of you deserve to uh, to give them a nod as well. So it's always a bit of a trick, but we love our lists, don't we, us metalheads? So let's get to it. So Lisa, what are we doing? We're going to the board. We want to hear what people have to say. Going to the board. Lots of comments coming in. Uh, 
one band that got a lot of uh, attention in our advanced Lockhorns poll that we did on the channel that I thought we could start off with is uh, Dying Fetus. Okay, here we go. Dying Fetus won the wrong one to fuck with. Let's see what the board has to say. Let's get this started. Pierre uh, Zigiel. Sorry for the butchery. Wrong one to fuck with slays from the opening note. Every minute of this album is nothing but relentlessly brutal. The dual vocals uh, keep a lot of songs fresh, and when they layer themselves, it sounds sick as fuck. Uh, Dying Fetus also have the experience to know when enough is enough. Simply a solid, brutal, whiplash-inducing oral battery that I cannot stop listening to. Nice. That took some preparation. Uh, Viking Runner. If there was a soundtrack for getting kicked in the dick, by a small country, <laughs> this would be it. Why it's a small country, no idea. But anyway, uh, three piece. Only, oh, three members. nice, small got country. it. Styled upon. Dying Fetus had the best death metal album this year. They smashed my dick into oblivion with wrong one to fuck with. People like getting their dick smashed to Dying Fetus. We got a bag of dicks early here on Lockhorns. That's uh, that's we got to like roll. Man. We're gonna roll with this. Okay, what else, Lisa? I think we got to move fast, right? We do. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna like put a bunch of these albums on there and mm -hmm. then fight it out later. Yeah, it's like a speed date. Here we go. Black Dahlia Murder, because we're only in the death metal. We got a lot to cover. Uh, Nightbringers, Progmaster 666. Nightbringers production is incredible. Trevor's vocals are at their best here. The riffs are catchy but brutal. And just everyone performed their asses off on this record. Best metal record for me this year. Not just best death metal record. It is a great record. I was actually listening to it today. Those guys just keep on churning out these high octane, uh, amazing extreme metal uh, songs. Michael Taylor, Black Dahlia Murder was my favorite death metal album this year. A mellow death album with a heavy emphasis on the death metal. Pretty good record. Can't disagree. What else? Uh, Canadians. Canadians, eh? What do we got? We got Arkspire? Uh, we don't have the magnet, so oh. you're going to have to write that okay, one on. Okay, we can write Arkspire on, on here. We got uh, Zedzgoad 1. Let's get this down. Ark. Spire. There we go. Uh, here we go. Relentless Mutation. Easily the best album of 2017. The album that brought death metal the most forward. All the others were quite predictable. Not exactly fresh. Aliens did it. The best out of the bunch is Arc Spire. It is easily the most forward thinking. They incorporated technicality and melody into their music without losing any of the aggression like so much modern tech death does. And Shane Tetlock says Relentless Mutation mops the floor with the other nominees. Fast, technical, non-stop brutality. Brad, Just you gave that going? a pretty good review. I did. And uh, we put it on, exclaimed we put it on our underrated albums of the year list. Okay, yeah. Because I feel like people, it's getting acclaimed, but I feel like it deserves more acclaim. Just so. quickly, it's not about us this week, but fave out of those three? <laughs> do, 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 do. Our Fire, then Dying Fetus, then Black Dahlia. Okay. But they're all like, you know, fours out of fives. Yeah. Uh, they are. Choose. That's what I gave all of them. Hey, so you're a death metal. Yes. The locking of horns has begun. Apparently Dying Fetus isn't the slam dunk. Okay, fucking wasted says, hell no. Dying Fetus sucks, Brad. Generic death metal with moronic riffs. I like it. Dallas Clark, screw Dying Fetus. Just because you're brutal doesn't mean that you're good. And Julius SW, wrong one to fuck with, was not really that interesting and new. Okay, so just going to maybe set Dying Fetus aside. We've got some detraction there. So we've got uh, Black Dahlia Murder and Arkspire are on the board. Any more death metal to, uh, to grapple with here, Lisa? Uh, you would think, uh, just let me find it, <laughs> I feel, yes? So much. Septic Flesh. Here we go. Daniel Hale says, Codex Omega, not another rehash of death metal nostalgia. I liked Cannibal Corpse and Obituary, but this sounded vital and forward thinking. Harbinger of Taxes says Codex Omega is epic, fun, and heavy at the same time. Never gets boring in spite of being somewhat formulaic. And Nikolaus Dimitriadis says um, epic combination of dark cinematic orchestrations and expert riffing brutality their best. Do we have a septic flesh uh, magnet there, Lisa? Thank you very much. That'll go right there. 
replacing dying fetus for now. Uh, we got some classics here, Lisa, some older bands. It's one of these weeks where there's so much going on in the chat, it's hard to keep track. Yeah. We are trying, just like we we're trying, we we're working on the sound. Um, and we're going to try and do this by genre. So yeah. if you could all just talk about the genre we're on and then save it, all your power metal records or prog yeah. records for later, okay. there's more of a chance of you uh, getting on the show and helping us with our task. Okay. Um, but, but for now, I think we actually would need then to move on okay. to the next genre that we're going to okay. talk about, which is thrash. And once again, we have a video. We're into the thrash, some creator, some power trip, some cavaleras in there. Uh, big thrash fan, so this will be fun. Lisa, where do we want to start? Who's we're, up first here? We're going to start, uh, surprisingly, not with power trip. We're going to start with creator. Okay, here we go. Horror Master says, Gods of Violence has to be my pick. Tracks such as Satan is Real, Gods of Violence, and Fallen Brother are just amazing and adding the satanic imagery to the album that alone convinced me uh, this album. Uh, Thrash Maniac 99. I was expect to, seeing, expect to see that photo. Anyway, my favorite album of 2017 would have to be Creator's Gods of Violence. A wonderful musical journey of brutality and beauty. Creator continues to show that the old school thrash sound is alive. Stefan uh, Bjergens, Thrash? Only one choice, and only one, creator, because this is the definition of real, pure thrash metal. Uh, metal Warrior 619, uh, Belt Creator. Gods of Violence is easily one of the best records uh, this year. Amazing and catchy riffs throughout. Definitely sounds like they bested their previous record. And Mike Hallengren says, Creator remains at the top of the thrash heap. Strongest CD since Violent Revolution. You know, we were talking about this one too uh, earlier, uh, Brad. Creator, great band. You know, tough to keep pumping out those records. I mean, what did you think of Gods of Violence? I prefer Creator before they started adding a lot more of the mellow death uh, elements. Yep. I think the vocals are a lot more suited for a more thrash metal oriented right, sound. Uh, right. You know, if you're doing Mellow Death, I want vocals more like Thomas Lindbergh, and I'm sure the chat fucking hates me right now, but that's how I feel. And I'm not saying they're a bad band, I'm just saying it's it's not for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Violent Revolution was mentioned, and I thought that was definitely the album where they started to make that transition. I remember when that album came out, I, I, I thought it really worked. I didn't think the creator were going to kind of be able to make that transition to a more melodic sound, but they did it. But there's no question that Gods of Violence was uh, a, a strong record for creator, and you definitely know it's them. Lisa, what's next beyond creator? Well, we what can't we go too far without talking about Power Trip for okay. the best of 27. A lot of talk about Power Trip this year. It was Blaine's record of the year. I know, I know a lot of our viewers like it. So here we go. Wyatt Wilcher or Wilker. Uh, Nightmare Logic is what modern thrash metal should sound like in that it takes cues from the past, but it regurgitates it in a fresh and new way. Satanica Scriba says Power Trip just makes me move more than the other. It's energized.
synthesized in a way that doesn't feel like the music version of an amp energy drink. It thrashes and it pummels, simple as that. But amps like the budget energy drink, you know? That's the one you totally. get for $2 instead of $3. That's right. So. Maybe not the bad. We like Monster. Uh, Bizzle Archivist says Power Trip is doing nothing original. Do they kick ass? Yeah. But they don't deserve to be on the list for making music Exodus did 30 years ago. Next. It's a good point. Overwhelmed. Nightmare Logic is perfectly executed. Crushing riffs and amazing solos. And who we got to hear? Styled Upon. Power Trip without question the best thrash album in a few decades. Unbelievable energy, and once it's over, you're hitting that play button again. Perfect record smashes my dick. Come on, people! The bag of dicks just gets bigger. Uh, Brian Wendorf says, thrash is all about the riffs. Power Trip has them. Pretty strong opinions. You like this record, Brad? I do. Yeah? I, think, I think it's it's better than their first full length. Uh, before their first full length, they did a they did a seven inch. I had two songs on it. Love them. First full length came out, it was good. It didn't quite measure up to those expectations. I think this one kind of met them, if not blew them out of the water. Yep. It, sheer consistency, consistency throughout the album. I mean, I saw them for the first time in 2012 at This Is Hardcore, and they were tour, like playing more in the hardcore scene, despite the fact that, you know, they are a crossover. There is some hardcore, and yep. there's some metal. There's for like sure. thrash and metal. For but sure. uh, it's been very cool to see them grow and be embraced by the more metal community, which is kind of a community that the word hardcore is kind of a dirty word. Yeah, well, uh, which I, I, think, I think a lot of metal has a weird misconception about what hardcore is. Right. Um, but, you know, with bands like that and Code Orange, who I'm sure we'll get to later, yep. uh, that misconception is kind of going away. Yeah, and nice. I think it depends on age. I mean, I think if you were there during that first Bay Area explosion in the 80s, you're old enough to tell that tale. Uh, it feels a bit, maybe a bit redundant, but man, if you know, if you're hearing this for the first time and you're 15 and you've never even heard nuclear assault, uh, no doubt it would do something to my dick too. But I, I can't believe I just said that, but it just feels like it's de, de rigueur. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. We're not talking about dicks, we're talking about I metal. Just, no, we're talking about energy drinks, not dick drinks. Just trying to be part of the team, that's drinks. all. Okay, so, what's uh, next? There's a couple other thrash bands we want to get uh, for consideration on the board. Yes, here we go. Havoc. Uh, Dominic Bishop. Havoc's conformicide, because they delivered on their lofty promise of creating their career best performance and songwriting, and the album slays. They're the most solid and influential neo thrash band. Woo, big words. Paul Ypre says Havoc is the $4 energy drink. We're getting somewhere. Yeah, but I'm not paying $4 for an energy <laughs> drink. So. And what else do we got? Uh, are we in the right spot? Alex uh, Rolu. Lich King have, uh, I don't know if that's the right comment there, Lisa, am I? Yeah, that's another uh, new topic, Lich, uh, Lich King. Oh, okay, I got you. Have cultivated a uh, new a discography of incredibly catchy songs with an energy that almost surpasses most rethrash bands, and the omniclasm clasm isn't an exception. I'm not sure if we're on the right track there, but anyway, uh, Havoc. Havoc. I think you might want to write them in. Havoc, yeah. yeah. Right. What do you think? Uh, honestly, I don't yeah. think I've listened to that album much. Yep. Uh, a lot of metal. It's a K. Oh my goodness. There we go. Nice save. Thank you, buddy. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, that band's always been good, so I'm sure yep. it's good, especially if people are saying it's their career best. I'm sure I would appreciate it. Uh, evidently, I need to sit down and spend some time evidently. with it. Evidently. Okay, and we've got Warbringer. Warbringer, this was, a, this was an album I actually really dug. This year was also listening to it today uh, in advance of the show. Matthew Fisher, I really don't get the Power Trip hype. Yeah, it's a good album, but Warbringer are leagues more talented, and Woe to the Vanquished might be their most solid record to date. Matthew Fisher, I think I would also agree. Which I thought Warbringer why we made that. was a... Uh, Good point. More well, talented, a little more complex. I would even, I definitely would say a more original thrash album than certainly uh, Power Trip. But what also, do I know? It's also more thrash, like yeah. more actually thrash, less crossover, which is a matter of taste. You yeah. know, you might not like the punky hardcore element as much in Power Trip. For sure. Um, but I, th I, I would argue that they're on the same level. Yeah. You know, there's certainly uh, yeah, for sure. at the upper echelon of thrash metal. A lot of that power trip reminded me of, of early uh, DRI, COC, uh, during that kind of crossover era. Anyway, Lisa, any more thrash? Uh, some, but we'll, we'll get back to it because okay. we are uh, moving on to our next section. Okay. 
okay. where we talk about prog metal. Prog metal for, 19, uh, for 2017. Yeah. Some good prog metal albums we came start, out this year. We start with the clip. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Okay, well, one thing we know about prog is none of those are alike. Uh, the prog metal category is always a bit of a, of a grab bag of styles because really it's a, it's a concept of being progressive rather than one particular sound that, that kind of binds those bands. But yeah, there's a, Lisa, there was a lot there. Uh, who are we going to start with? We have to start with uh, something I know people are locking horns about, whether it's metal or not, and that is Emperor of Sand. Okay, here we go. Mastodon, the record that I completely changed my mind of during the course of this year, going from thinking it was a mediocre uh, Mastodon album to, I think, the best album that they've done since Crack the Sky, which is my all-time fave. Enough about me. Let's go to the board. Um, Meniotius says, Mastodon, Emperor of Sand. It's fucking Mastodon. To those uh, saying Emperor, Emperor of Sand is not a metal record, let me just clarify for all of you. It's a metal and rock blend, but not only that, they love to incorporate all different types of music that they love. In fact, I think they would be insulted to see someone say it's, it's just rock or just metal. Fair enough. Casey Starkel. I've loved Mastodon since, their fir since I first heard Blood Mountain. I found The Hunter and once more around the sun, a step in the wrong direction, but this album is really setting them back on track. I would agree. Uh, J Jacob, Jacob CH says, Emperor of Sand sounds like Mastodon mixed everything that made their previous albums great. Progressive metal from Leviathan, Blood Mountain, and the great vocal performances from Crack the Sky. Fabio BM, the musicianship is superb. The three vocalist synergy have been perfected. The guitarists, uh, duos and solos are fantastic. Braun is one of the best drummers. Uh, Alex Esau, I don't really, I don't get the Emperor of Sand loving from Sam. All of Mastodon's albums sucked after Crack the Sky. Disagree, Alex. Rockstar, listen to it again. Rockstar 1123, get Mastodon up there, sure. Show yourself sounded like a bag of dicks, but the rest of the album is like a $2.75 energy drink. Pretty great. All right, Jamie Laszlo, Mastodon is becoming Metallica where it's cool to say you don't like their new releases. I says, I says, fuck that. Emperor Sand is a great album. I think that's a great point. Jamie Laszlo, we were talking about that. Um, it's no longer cool to like Mastodon in the metal community. What'd you think? I liked it. I agree with the one comment that said the Hunter and Once More Around the Sun were kind of steps in the wrong direction. Once More Around the Sun kind of writing the wrong that I felt that the Hunter the sins that it committed, so to speak. Yes. Um, you know, I've seen comments about, you know, Show Yourself Not Being Good. It's the catchiest song they've ever written. I think that's, you know, when they did Curl of the Burl back on The Hunter, that was them going for more like a rock song. Yep. It just wasn't as catchy. In fact, right. I found it a little bit annoying, whereas yep. Show Yourself is yep. it's a fucking pop song from from the South, right. channeled through guitars and dudes who drink a lot of whiskey and yep. grow beers. Say what you will 
Uh, most of the metal I listen to is extreme. This is probably an exception in my sort of personal catalog, but damn, it's a great record. The Songcraft, incredible. And I challenge anyone to find any band in rock or metal who uses three vocalists in the way that Mastodon does as effectively, and they all have their own approach, and they're not uh, being redundant to each other, but I am probably being redundant now. Lisa, who's next? Yeah, well, uh, if y'all like Sam talking about Mastodon, you may enjoy him talking about the next band under consideration, which is Enslaved. Another one of my personal favorites. This was one of my albums of the year as well. Enslaved, uh, E, August Fuhrman. Enslaved just kills it. The band is at the height of their game and continues to show their maturity and creativity. Reich Grün says, Enslaved E, most diverse and intense record exploring multiple genres with great lyrical concept. Uh, they're afraid of nothing and you never know what will happen next while listening. Darren Symes or Simes says, Enslaved once more puts out a fantastic record that never gets boring. Fantastic songwriting, excuse me, and great transitions from Prague to blackened elements. And the concept is deep as usual. And Brian Osorio, not the best year for Prague, I would say. If I had to pick, I'd pick Enslaved. Brad, thoughts? Admittedly, I don't listen to that much Prague because yep. I like to bang my head. There's, it's not, a, yep. that's, that's an, this is an album you have to listen to front to back. You yep. need to like focus on it. Uh, and I just, I don't do that as much lately because I'm always busy doing something, you know, whether it's Exclaim, whether it's getting ready for something yep. here, whether yep. it's working on my record label, managing a band, like this, that, I'm always going. So I, I don't really sit down with albums like this, but that being said, I did listen to it in preparation for this. Yeah. What I heard I liked. Yeah. If there's ever a day where I'm like, I'm gonna give myself a day off, I will sit in bed with my headphones and listen to that album because it did sound promising and certainly more progressive than Mastodon, which is for sure. You yeah. Know. Yeah. You like your metal just straight. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Okay. Uh, Lisa, we got a lot of, we got a lot of albums on here. Uh, uh, we you do. Know. We're, we're going to have 10 at the end. Well, we've so. got nine. So the so, thing is, uh, we need well, we people. Well, got 10 in consideration. Well, yeah. we set uh, Dying Fetus aside. I mean, uh, so far I haven't heard a lot of opposition to any of these albums. I suppose maybe Mastodon, there's a bit of dissension. Maybe uh, with the Power Trip record, there's a bit of dissension. People feeling like it's a bit of a nostalgia trip. Maybe the Creator record, uh, not sure. But anyway, we've got to keep moving forward. Yeah, I, so I take know. issue with the comment, Black Dolly Murder, our scene core. Oh, you do? I think that guy is stuck away in the past and people haven't realized because of the bands that they came up with. Yeah. They get lumped into that kind of stuff, but I mean, I feel with this album in the comments, there was a lot of people being like, I didn't even realize they were like a melodic death metal band, and they checked them out and they love it. Right. And I think that dude needs to listen to their stuff a little bit more. I take issue but, with myself for not knowing what the fuck scene core means, but anyway, that's another story altogether. Well, if you like that rant, uh, you're going to enjoy this next segment, which we call Core, core. and uh, Bradley's going to walk us through some of those uh, hot topics, uh, starting with Code Orange. Are we doing a a video? There's no video. There's no video. It's all Brad. All, all right. Brad. Code all me. Orange. Code but Orange. We, but we do want to talk about them getting a Grammy nomination. So we're going to bring that graphic up uh, to show the, what company that Code Orange has uh, skyrocketed into. There you go. Cool. So yeah, Code Orange. Yes. Got a Grammy nomina nomination. Amazing. Good mm -hmm. for them. Uh, if you've seen my review, you know it's not my favorite Code Orange album. I really liked the two that came first. But me giving it a 3 out of 5 is not me saying they're a bad band. It's not even me saying it's a bad record. A 3 out of 5 is a positive review. It's just they're doing a lot of experimenting, and I feel like they're, they're ironing out some of the kinks. I feel it's a transition album. I feel like there's a lot of people who are putting it number one, number two on their lists. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this is their Jane Doe, you know, which mm -hmm. is like Converge's like mm -hmm. sweated, most sweated about yep. album. Yep. Um, I don't think this is their Jane Doe. After, after Jane Doe, they put out You Fail Me, which is kind of on the, if people think it's on the same level. I think the next Code Orange album is going to absolutely blow this one out of the water and people are going to be like, why did I say that was number one? I think right. the next one is really going to change the game. I do give them a lot of props for pushing and trying to change the game and doing more. I also give them a lot of props for saying that they're a hardcore band despite a lot of metal influence. I think they are definitely bringing a lot of metalheads over to the hardcore realm and not thinking hardcore is such a dirty word, you know, as is Power Trip with their like hardcore influences. I think metalheads are like, oh, hardcore is not. Yep you know, a warp Tour breakdown, which is right. what people think, think it was. Right. 
Bradley Zordrager, never short on opinions on Code Orange. Let's go to the board. Wyatt Wilker, this is the best hardcore album I've heard come out in a while. Reminding me of such bands as Converge, Earth Crisis, Integrity, and even Hatebreed, but while doing something original. This album isn't what the mainstream idea of metalcore is. This is, your, to your point, I think, Brad, this is what it should be. A true blend of metal and hardcore that takes no prisoners, doesn't give a shit what you think. Chris Taylor, Code Orange are the ultimate redemption for hardcore music. Most of it is not worth my time, but Forever is a stunning album. Some strong opinions here on this album. Uh, Spike Zillion says Code Orange is overrated. The mix is really hard for me to swallow, and that really ruins the album. There has to be a reason to have all the instruments in there, and right now, I can't say there's a reason for the decision to have the weird imbalance of vocals and drums, especially some strong opinions there, but definitely the ones that like the album making a strong case. Lisa, is that it for Code Orange? It is for Code Orange, it is but for Code Orange. sorry guys, sorry haters, it is not the end of our core section <laughs> on lock horns but right. we do call it lock horns for a reason so uh don't be shy tell yep. us what you really think about all of this as we go to another pick here we go august burns red let's go to the board and then i want your opinion uh brad petio kolev phantom anthem it's the most complete album from this year every song has its own direction and emotion behind it love its overall vibe and pat fix says thought i was done with august burns red but they really surprised me with phantom great melodies and craftsmanship great stuff uh and christian royal says august burns red is just better y'all don't know what you're talking about thoughts on this one admittedly i haven't really spent much time with the new august burns red album yep. uh the past couple haven't really grabbed me they've never put out a bad album mm -hmm. they're more than competent they're great players they're great songwriters it yep. just doesn't grab me as much as you know thrill seeker messengers um and their, their earlier stuff did um that being said, I'm sure it's a good album. The one guy said he thought he was done with them and this brought him back into the fold. Yeah. So maybe I do need to listen to it a little bit more. I'm, uh, yeah. So I'm much metal, so little time. But uh, Lisa, we've kind of skipped over a heavyweight in the core category, have we not? Uh, only so that we could get to them uh, last, <laughs> like the best. Here we go. Converge, uh, big band a huge gateway drug <laughs> for a lot of fans. Here we go, Converge, Toxic Potato. Everyone was putting Code Orange on a pedestal because they just broke through. But let's not forget the band that taught them all their tricks and shaped their sound. The Abyssal Archivist, um, Converge, uh, is overrated, uh, no, by comparison, uh, August Burns Red is thank overrated. Thank you. August Burns Red is overrated by comparison. Converge is the album of the year. Diverse, vicious, emotive, and very sludgy. It was worth the wait. M-A-D-A -A says Converge never disappoints. No matter what they put out with their aggressive metal core sound while mixing some melody that never overstays their welcome. And Mobaldi, The Dusk in Us is my album of the year. The songwriting and musicianship are incredible. They admittedly stepped out of their comfort zone on some songs to produce some of the most interesting stuff of their career. Love it. Brad, weigh in. No, what? don't let Brad weigh in on Converge. We'll never go home. Uh... Y'all know I love Converge. <laughs> You've seen my review. You've seen my back tattoo. <laughs> I love Converge. It's another great album. The softer songs actually really grew on me, and they're some of my favorites on it. The first song on the album, Single Tear, might be one of the catchiest songs they've ever written. Mm -hmm. Listen to that band. You know, if you are like scared away by the other oh, hardcore things, there's so much more than any one genre, and you just listen. Just listen to them. Zorg Dragger never stops flying the flag for all things hardcore and certainly all things converge. Uh, so that's certainly a favorite. We've got, Lisa, more than 10 albums up here. So pretty soon we're going to have to do some uh, pretty vicious uh, slashing and burning on this list. Uh, we are. And so just to give uh, a brief overview of what's happening in the chat, uh, people are like, where's the black metal, yo? Uh, people want to talk about Neo Obliscaris. Mm-hmm which I can't pronounce very well. None of us can. And I feel that we jumped over these two records, and I'm surprised that there aren't more comments. Right. So I'm encouraging, not just because we have the magnets, uh, if you want to make a case for Machine Messiah yep. or for Psychosis, yep. uh, Let her rip. get in there and get in the chat. 
Get the Cavaliers represented, get the Seps re represented. We need to hear. We're gonna, we don't have a lot of time here, actually. We've only got a few minutes to go. But we are going to give some fans an opportunity to respond to Morbid Angel. Oh, yes. That old chestnut, Morbid Angel, sparking a lot of controversy on the boards, especially since our man Blaine uh, expressed his honest opinion about the new Morbid Angel record. Let's go to the board. Josh Agosi, my pick goes to the new Morbid Angel record. While playing it a bit safe, it was an excellent return to form after such a horrendous misstep. <clears throat> I think they should get at least credit for that. West Santo, Morbid Angel Kingdom's Disdained got really bad review, but I have to admit, I find myself listening to it more and more. Uh, Mick Lewitton, Morbid Angel, after you get over the production, Blaine. It's a brutal onslaught of Trey's genius. Otherworldly guitar work. There are heaps of little intricacies each time you listen. Brad, come on. You gonna play the diplomat here? I'm going right in the middle. I've seen a lot of people being like, this is the best album ever. I've seen a lot of people saying, well, what, basically what Blaine said. Um, I, I would put it right in the middle. I think it's a good album. I think the one problem is the one comment that was there where it said, uh, they made a massive misstep, and this one they're playing it safe. Yeah, that doesn't make a great album. Right. You know, it's right. it's it's a it's a good return to form. The production yeah. is pretty awful. It's good. I mm -hmm. think there's a lot better death metal that came out this year. Not even what's on the board. I think there's plenty of other like smaller b bands like Frenolith and mm -hmm. Veninum and Necrot and Undergang mm -hmm. and you yep. know Contaminated, Spectral Voice, Temple of Void, tons of cool bands. Sure. I just don't think a good return to form really cuts it. Right. You know. Good point. I, I think if they hadn't put that album out, this wouldn't have been sweated nearly as much. If they just put out another whatever mm -hmm. pretty good death metal album in between, this one people wouldn't be gotten an eye about. Lisa, do we have a magnet or no? Uh, for Morbid Angel, no. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. I'll just put it on Morbid A. That's because the artwork looks like an ant had sex with Hellboy and had a baby. Oh, that's why. There you go. You heard it here on Lockhorns. Okay, Morbid Angel is up there for now. We got through that relatively unscathed, unlike our man Blaine. But I'm anyway, Blaine. Uh, where are we going Blaine. next? I think we got to kind of start pushing things uh, to the end here, right, Lisa? I know. I see like a lot of people for the last hour talking about Ne Oblivisgaris, yep. and then uh, now uh, they got nothing but this one. We got okay, this Julius S.W., Ne Oblivisgaris can never say it. it makes violins sound metal. No one else can do that. They're the new Opeth. Prague is fuck and badass too. Uh, okay, that one comment does not make a best uh, a best album full of hell. John Edmonds Edmiston says, let's talk about the full of hell. Uh, full of hell's trumpeting ecstasy, top tier grindcore with hints of black metal, death metal, and harsh noise, making full of hell stand out as more than just another grind another grindcore band. You're nodding your head, Brad. You like that record? I, I like that record. I love that band. They did a collaboration record this year as well with the body. They're very prolific. They, mm -hmm. you know. They're putting out one, two albums basically every year, yeah. um, all of which are cool and pushing forward. I think it's very rare for a band to have their own sound in this day and age. Yeah. Um, and I think Full of Hell has really carved out their own sound. Um, Dylan is one of the best vocalists going. He's an absolute freak. Yeah. And when I saw them on Halloween on that tour with Cattle Decapitation, um, people were wearing costumes. They were wearing diapers, and they said we're dressed up as fans of death metal. <laughs> And I thought that was fucking hilarious. So, breath of fresh air. Full of hell, breath of fresh air. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Uh, Lisa, are we going to get some Cavalera uh, action we, we here got on a, the board? We got a couple Cavaleras, and then we're just going to do uh, okay. some rapid fire comments that okay. have come in that okay. I think are good. Okay, so where's our Cavaleras? There they are. Uh, Mobaldi. Psychosis is the album the Cavaleras have released uh, since Arise and Chaos AD. I think it's the best album, is what, he, what we're saying here. Brutal as fuck. I would have voted for Power Trip until this was released. It's so good to listen to a recharged Max. And Igor, the driver, says Cavalera Conspiracy Psychosis brought the riffs and showcased why the two bros are masters of thrash and groove metal influencers. No disputing there. Lisa, Cavalera. Do I write them down too? Well, we got you a magnet. Put them, you can put them on the side. They're contenders. We got a magnet. We got a magnet. Here we go. Okay. I'm feeling the pressure now. What do we do? Sepultura? 
Wessel Brookhue says, it is good Sepultura is still experimenting in that late in their career. Too bad, though, I don't dig it. Fabian uh, Oliveira says, Machine Messiah is a must, not only because it's their best with Derek Green, but it shows a band reinvent their sound after 30 years. Who else would have thought a thrash with a Hammond organ? As a longtime Sepultura fan, certainly agree it's the best album they put out in a long time. Whether it's one of the best albums of the year, not so sure. But uh, let's keep moving forward. <clears throat> All right, give me a second. Uh... Where are we going, Lisa? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen albums. So we got to vote some off the island here. We will in a few minutes okay. after the last blast of comments. We've got uh, Paradise Lost, maybe. Okay, Damien Cara says Paradise Lost, easily the best, so perfect, so raw. Master show the young pups how it's done right. Christian Zimmerman, uh, Medusa from Paralyzed Lost, is one of my favorite releases of the year and with easy, uh, easily a highlight of their career. It has all the best uh, of their often proved songwriting skills. And Hannes uh, Wiedenhofer says, Who cares about all this stuff, anyways? Get Paradise Lost up there already. Do we have a magnet, Lisa? No. We do not. Okay, Paradise Lost. Decibel, number one album of the year. That's, That's true. Worth yeah. mentioning. Yep. Yeah. Um, Fairness Lost. Num What's their number two album of the year? Can't remember. It wasn't Mastodon. Oh. And it wasn't Morbid Angel. That much I know. Anyway, uh, okay, moving on. Uh, while, I, while I try and uh, come up with any last picks, here's some fun uh, Lockhorn's comments that may help decide which of the records are coming down. Thank you. Here we go. Feligand 91 Arcspire is a blotted science copycat. Pfft. Style upon. Put Dying Fetus back up there and remove Black Dahlia. Uh, fucking wasted. I will march to the studio and blow my brains out if, if you put uh, Li Hing on the board. Well, we didn't. So we didn't. You're welcome. You You're can safe. Live. live another day. <laughs> Santiago Brajo says, no septic flesh. Please, not a fucking symphonic band. No! And style upon, let's be clear, Mastodon are a good band, but they aren't metal. They play dad rock. Sam's a dad. Hey, never been insulted more than in my life. So why don't you guys try and knock that down, and I'll see if there's any going to slide in at the end. Okay, well, I would say based on feedback, what do you think? Brad? I mean, I, th I think the people are saying no Mastodon. As much as yeah. we are fans, I think that's what the we people are saying. We could pull that off and see what happens. Um, Havoc, we had some good stuff. Morbid Angel, people like the Morbid Angel record. Full of Hell might be a bit of a stretch. We really only had a couple of comments, we only had a couple comments. About, about Full of Hell. I don't know if I have my eraser, but we'll just do that. That's messy, but it'll work. Metal's messy, so we keep it yeah. messy. There we go. Full of Hell is gone. So that knocks it down to 12, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, 11, because this is gone. Oh, sorry, 11. Thank you. Can't even count. Running out of time. Arcspire, Havoc, Septic Flesh. Some dissension there. I think there was, a, there was some dissension There's there. There's definitely some dissension there. We'll pull those guys off. Is that our 10? We have Black Dahlia, Arcspire, Converge, Creator, Power Trip, Havoc, Morbid Angel, Warbringer, Enslaved, and Code Orange. You know what I'm going to say? Very thrash heavy. There's too much thrash on there for, an al for a year that we named the year of death metal. Yeah, I, I think metal. having Havoc, Power Trip, and Warbringer up there. I'm, 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 I'm not, and I'm, Creator. I'm going with taking off Havoc and Creator. If it, was, if it were up to me, I would take both those off and put on some less. There was a lot of love for Creator. A lot of like love for Creator. Maybe Havoc. Should have it go. What would go in then? I would say creator needs to stay. Creator staying. Yeah. Havoc's well, you know what? Go? There was actually less comments for Warbringer, even though we You're liked right. it more. You're than right. Less You're right. Let's pull. Let's pull Warbringer off. See what happens. I think we should put Cavalier in. We're down to nine. There was a lot of love for that. We're back I, up I to ten. Really Cavalier is in. I haven't seen anybody say they dislike that album. Truth. Truth. You know, a lot of people saying it's their best in years. I mean, I know. Um, I interviewed the Cavaleras. Yeah. Um, for aggressive tendencies, and they were talking about they love all these younger bands like the Home Wreckers, sure. Full of Hell. They love all these bands, sure. and they told me it kind of lit a fire under their ass. And like, for sure, if that's what we're gonna get, I hope they keep listening to those younger bands. How man. many spots do we have left? Uh, we got ten. Because uh, we might need to make some room. These are the uh, come up from behind albums. Okay. It's the top eleven. <laughs> Just does, we got Bell Witch. We'll put them off to the side. We know there's uh, a lot of comments on that. Uh, it was a popular one for Banger TV this year. And Paul Bearer. 
two bands, both on Profound Lore, Canadian label. Yep. Worth mentioning. Worth mentioning. Support Profound Lore. We've, got, some, we've got some, we've got some, some final comments. We'll go, we'll go to Bell Witch, Styled Upon, uh, Bell Witch, Mirror Reaper. Not only has the best album cover of the year, hands down, but it's unbelievably haunting, ethereal, and heavy. It needs a spot. Jamie Laszlo, Bell Witch, is the sonic equivalent every monster I thought was under my bed when I was six. It's a child's nightmare come true, and that's why I love it. Cafe Wombat, Bell Witch can't be put into words. It's an experience. We'll go straight down to Paul Bearer. Lisa, we got some comments. Here we go. Adam Portier. Can we talk about Paul Bearer? That was a fantastic piece of doom metal, showing respect for trad doom bands and a fresh technical future. Beautiful and crushing. Aliens did it. Paul Bearer picks up where uh, Warning and Candlemass left off and fused some prog and sludge elements in there. A little surprised we even heard about Elder. Personally, I thought that was a stronger uh, doom metal offering uh, this year. Does that constitute being added to the top 10? Not so sure. I feel that Bell Witch is a very solid candidate. And okay. Over, Over Havoc. Havoc. That's what I'm saying. No disrespect to Havoc. It's a fucking one song album, like 83 fucking minutes. <laughs> one song album. How does that get so much critical acclaim? There you One go. One long song like that. Although it's really Lisa fucking is good. I know, I know. Because uh, I'm over here managing things, even though we're pretty much out of time. Yes. I'm going to let the Godflesh argument slide in. You there. would. I the would driver says that. Godflesh post self. That album showcased how the band can still be heavy with just two people and a drum machine while expanding their sound and exploring atmospheric sounds. Uh, Nicholas Burton. Well, have you seen anyone saying the new Godflesh is disappointing? It came out so late, so few comments, but everyone says it's back to true form. So just put Godflesh up there, please. Well, I don't know about just putting them up there, but we will certainly put them off to the side. Godflesh, legends, so much metal. Don't worry, Bradley. guys, who are commenting about Morbid Angel, they're not being counted. They're, like, not on the list. They are. They are. They, they are? are? Yeah. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Morbid Angel is currently in the top ten I'm voting of take 2017. Them down. Remember, as that one guy said, it's a fuck. He kind of, he, despite the fact that he was cheering for them, he kind of took yep. them down a step because he was like, it's playing it safe, but it's a good return to form. Again, that doesn't make a good okay, album. Okay, we're going to take him off. The banger hanger may blow up. I've just erased more of an angel from the top 10 for 2017. Let's see what happens. What's the replacement, Brad? We've got Dying Fetus, Septic Flesh, Warbringer God Flesh, Sepultura, Paul Bearer, Paradise Lost, Mastodon. If I'm talking personally of the album I listen to most, I would say Dying Fetus. Yes. You can see my hat. I haven't really listened to the Profound Lore. Yep. Profound Lore, Jesus. Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost. PL means Profound yep. Lore to me. Yep. Um, one of the best record labels. Okay, it is death metal. It's the year of death metal, Dying Fetus. We did have a few people, though, say they thought that the Dying Fetus record was not particularly strong, but I do think that's more uh, just people who aren't fans of Dying Fetus weighing in, not necessarily just that record. Okay. A little stronger on the death metal now. We've got Dying Fetus, Black Dahlia Murder, Arcspire, Converge, Creator, Power Trip, Bell Witch, Cavalera Conspiracy, Enslaved, and Code Orange. Not bad. A little bit of death, a little bit of thrash, some doom, some hardcore, a little bit of Canada. Not enough. My Mastodon's not on there, but it's okay. I don't mean, have to get along. Two out of five with a heavy... Canada Connection, Canadian label, Canadian band. We got one straggler here, Lisa the, Daniel. The, the chart still wants this band. We haven't talked about them very much, but I, I get the feels. Dan I get yeah. the feels. Daniel Shuju, a best metal list without Ne Obliviscaris is just wrong. I can even forgive you the lack of Pain of Salvation, but no NEO is just brutal. And while still, while still being melodic and featuring some of the best songwriting. Well... Lisa? Do we need to make this the top 13? Uh, they, <laughs> where, who do they replace? I don't know who they replace. We haven't heard a lot of dissension. <clears throat> I mean, the only album that, uh, in my, my, my mind that's got a lot of uh, dissension is uh, Power Trip. I've but seen, I've there's seen so a, many comments for Power Trip I've that it's hard to argue against. I've seen a lot of dissension on Code Orange on the side, yes. but I've also seen probably more positive comments. So right. I think that kind of like levels itself out. I right, think, right. Think Arc Spire seems pretty strong. Black, Black Dahlia, a lot of comments. Creator, 
I think, enslaved, pretty strong. I don't know. I'm feeling this list. I'm feeling this list, Lisa. You feel good? I, I think we got the list. Do we get the list? Of 10. Oh, we got 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I did count it right this time. I think we got it. There it is. Our best metal album list of 2017. Dying Fetus, Black Dahlia Murder, Arc Spire, Converge, Creator, Power Trip, Bell Witch, Cavalera Conspiracy, Enslaved, Code Orange. Nobody wants the Code Orange. We can't win. <laughs> we can't win. There's a lot of thumbs down on Code Orange, guys. Is you there really? Okay. We got a code, code orange. Code. My opinions aside, a hardcore man got nominated for a Grammy. It stays. Oh, I'm putting my foot I just down. About to take it off. Even oh. as somebody, but that's not my favorite Code Orange album. I'm gonna stand up for the band. They are a hardcore band who got nominated for a Grammy. Yeah. I think they stay because what other hardcore man got nominated for? A Grammy? I think, frankly, the bell is tolling. We're reaching, <laughs> reaching the hour of five. We've got to wrap this up, people. We can't get along all the time. It's what it's all about, locking horns. And Lisa, is that it? Are we done? We're done. What's up for 2018, my friend? There's a lot of albums coming out that yeah? I'm looking forward to, or I'm thinking they might come out based on, I don't necessarily have proof, but I've heard the new Genocide Pact, awesome, Harm's Way, Home Wrecker, Outer Heaven, Vain, hopefully Cult Leader, Piss Grave, Plebeian Grandstand, Scorched, Six of Swords, At the Gates, Misery Index, Cattle Decapitation, Aborted, I think Possessed is coming out with the wow. first new album awesome. in a long time. Awesome. Like This City came back, hopefully some Exodus, mm -hmm. Mammoth Grinder, Gate Creeper. Abbath? Did you mention Abbath? Big Destroyer. No, We're I due didn't. for another Abbath record. I think one should be coming down the pipe. Lots of, yeah, lots of, lots of great stuff you All know, right. coming out next year. I think there's, I think it's going to be another great year. Okay, well, there you have it, folks. So we'll, uh, we'll argue next year. It's never See a neat and tidy at Lockhorns, but we got there. Here's our best metal albums of 2017. Thank you, Brad, for joining me in the studio. Thank you, Daniel, Craig, Andrew, and of course, Lisa and her sleigh bells thanks to the Santa hat. Uh, we're on hiatus until January. We'll see you in the new year. Leave a comment on what genres, bands, and labels you want to see debated in 2018. We want to hear what you want to see on Banger TV and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Wait, yes. when you subscribe, there's a little bell. Press the bell and it'll give you notifications every time we post something. If you don't, YouTube's algorithm learns how often you respond to the emails and stuff, you get notifications. And if you don't respond to them all, then they stop giving you as many notifications. So if you want to know every single time we put something up, hit the bell. And I think you can do that even if you subscribed a year ago. You can still hit the bell. Awesome. I think everybody should hit the bell. Tis and, the season. Ring the yeah, bell. Ring the bell. Lisa, go. Happy holidays, everyone, from all of us at Banger TV. We'll see you in 2018. Bye from us at Lockhorns.